Right, good morning my quilty friends. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how I do quilt as you go. There's more than one method. The method I'm doing at the moment is quilt as you go and that's the front and then on the back you get the joins there. There's no sashing on the back. So that's the quilt as you go that we are that I'm going to be showing you this morning. Try and put that tidy there. Okay. Right. So you make up your quilt as you go blocks. And it's just like making a little quilt really. So you piece the top. Then you put wadding on that's a little bit bigger than the top. And back in a little bit bigger than the wadding. Just like a little mini quilt. You then quilt it whether it's hand or machine stitched. These are mach machine stitched. And once you've done them all, each block is completely quilted and they just need to be put together, which is why it's called Quilt As You Go. So I've put little, I've done the layout I want to do and I've put little um, numbers on them so that I know where I am. So there you go. So this is row B, row, sorry, row five and it's piece A and B. So to get the two pieces you want to join together. And you need to put the wadding and the backing out of the way. You can turn it back, you can pin it if you want. Let's put that out of the way. Put the two pieces together. Then turn them over, right sides together. And then you're going to pin them, tack them if you want, and then stitch them. I've got um, little corner pieces on you, so I need to match those corners. But if you didn't, it's just joining them together with a quarter of an inch seam. So this one is joined together now with a quarter of an inch seam. There. You can, you can either finger press it flat. Or I put a little, um, my little travel iron down there. Uh, don't put it too hot. I've got a, an 80-20 cotton wad in, so that'll take a fair bit of heat. But you can finger press it and that'll be fine. So the next thing you want to do... Hold on a second. There you go. So now the wad in and the, the back in is over there. So we're now going to put the wad in across. But before we... We're going to cut the wad in. So before we cut the wad in, I'm going to put... I've got a metal ruler. But you could, well, you could use a plastic ruler, a piece of plastic, I got a piece of card here. Anything that you can put down onto the, the front before you lay the, the wad in over it. And the reason for this is so that when you cut your wad in, you don't accidentally cut through the front of your work. So I'm going to lay the wad in down and it's going to overlap. So that's overlapping. And once I've got it down and overlapped, take a nice tidy pair of scissors, nice sharp pair of scissors, and cut up between the, the two of them. And that's the reason why the, the ruler or the card is there, so you don't accidentally go and cut through the front of your work. There, I've cut through that now. You can move your little ruler up as you're going along. So then you just take away the bits that come away and these two should sort of, sort of meet together. Now you can leave the ruler in at this point if you want. Um, and we're going to stitch these two pieces um, together with a little ladder stitch. I don't start right at the end because some of it might be cut off. So I start about half an inch in. Because you may be cutting some of this off later. So I'm going to stitch... Just using a little bit of a, there we go, just a little bit of a ladder stitch or whatever stitch you want. Basically, you're just joining these two pieces together. You can use any um, any thread. Obviously, you want a, a one that matches the colour, more or less, of your wadding. You can use whatever needle comes to hand because this is just, this is just tacking them together. So you just go up the whole length of it. Join in together as you go. 
Okay, so that one's now, they've just been joined together. Just joined that wadding together in the middle. Now I'm using different coloured backings because I'm trying to use up all my scraps. Ha ha ha, as if you ever will. But still, I'm trying. Um, you could use all the same. So the, these two fabrics could be the same. Mine just happen to be different. So now you want to turn your work over and you want to put some um, pins in along the seam line. See the seam line? So if you put some pins in on that seam line, just put a couple there so they can show you. You want to go right through to the, the other side of the wadding on this. Oh, here's less speed, they say, don't they? There we go. Another one and another one. So that's pinning along the seam line. Then when you turn your work over, you will see little marks where those pins are. Can you see there? And there. We're going to use that now to tell us where we need to have our seam. So I'm going to put that down. And I'm going to put, um, I think I should put, let me see which is the better one. Hold on a second. Right. So take in the piece that you're going to make your um, sort of seam on, your join on. You put that, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to fold this over. And can you see where the little pin marks are there? I'm going to fold it over and fold it back on itself down along that pin line. So I'll do that now and I'm going to finger press it as I go. So you're using those pins as a guide where to fold over. It doesn't matter if it's if it's not straight this side because you're not going to see any of that. It's going to go under, it's going to be turned the other way in a minute. All right, so I've given that a good finger press. Now this then goes on the other side. Now, you can cut that back if you want. I might cut, cut that back just a little bit. It, it is a little bit too, too long, really. Let me just cut a little bit back. So I've just cut about an eighth of an inch off that because it, it was just touching the other side and it was going to leave a little, perhaps a little lump. There you go. So that's lying flat. Now then, you take... This piece that you finger pressed all nicely. Okay, so you've got a nice little crease in that. And you now turn that and thing and press it now, turn it the other way on that pressed line. You're going to turn it the other way. So that's folding over nice. It's giving you the line to, to stitch on. So I'm finding that crease line and I'm creasing it down, finger pressing it down the other way. Okay. So I finger press that down, so I'm going to put a few pins in to hold it in place. Now what I found was, when I was stitching, and I'm not a lover of, a lover of tacking, but sometimes it is necessary, and it is necessary here for it to work nicely. Um, so I'm pinning it down, so I pin it all the way along down, and then I'm going to just tack, so you can see the pins there. Now I'm just going to tack the whole thing quite near to the edge. Can you see that? And I'm going to take the pins out as I come to them. Because I have to keep it flat. To keep it flat, but I'm having to hold it up so that you can see it. But I wouldn't keep moving it up. But can you see there? And I'm just stitching quite near to the edge. With a tack in stitch. So here's one now, all nicely, all nicely tacked. So now you need to do what we call an invisible hem. Now I'm using here a smaller um, needle and a finer thread. You you need you you don't want this to be seen. So you need a nice. So I'm using quite a, a fine neat little needle and a nice little thread. Now then, I need to get in close to show you this. I'm left-handed. I'll show you left-handed first and then I'll attempt to show you right-handed. 
this invisible hem stitch Let's see if I can get there now then I'm up to my there on it at the moment so you need to get your needle in side sideways on let me put a little thimble on right so your needle needs to come in sort of sideways on and I normally just push it slightly under the top of the work and insert the needle into the top fabric and the wadding and then I'm coming up about oh gosh and it between somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch but I'm just catching honestly just catching a couple of threads right and pushing that through so I'm going needle flat pushing it just slightly under the work needle into the fabric into the wadding and back up just a couple of um, threads the idea is you don't want to see this this stitch my right-handed attempt now right so I've got my needle I'm gonna put it the brown is on top that's where the fold is so I'm gonna take the needle sort of flat on just where the stitch came up slightly under that piece of brown going into the bottom fabric and the wadding and coming back up about well in between a qu quarter and an eighth of an inch I don't know if you can see that just catching a couple of threads and that gives you a whoops hang on there you are can you see that and that gives you just a couple of threads and a nice hopefully fairly invisible because all that is stitched okay so then the idea of that is that you you don't there's no um gosh what's the word not not um ah. with this method there's no sashing on the back you just join one piece to another and if those were the same fabrics, you know, it would all look as one. And also that seam there, because we put those pins through, is in exactly the same place as the seam on the other side of your work. So that's it. Hope it helps. Bye.